welcome back to another episode of the Pandemic, the Zuma Pandemic Live Stream Class. Today we're going to be working on skill. We're going to be looking at some different ways that we can use the spear, both as a thrusting as well as a cutting tool. We're also going to take a look at one of the ways that they could have used the spear in the armored school. And this is going to allow us to use the spear as if our helmet is in armor, like a judicial duel of the enforcement. Today we're using spears that have blunted points. We are not going to be wearing masks. But when you're practicing this thing, these kinds of things, I suggest that you do. Start again. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the HEMA pandemic live stream class. Today, we're going to be working on the use of the spear, both as a cutting tool as well as a thrusting tool. We're also going to do a little bit of work using the spear along with the sword, as I think it could have been used during a judicial duel of the 14th century. Or one of the ways it could have been used during one of those duels. Because it's a thrusting and cutting tool, it's not just about poking, though that works. It does have some weaknesses with it in the fact that he hits my spear and it is going to go quite a ways off of line. This is different than the quarter staff because of the weight of the head. If we don't have a metal head, little adjustments to the spear don't move it as much as if it did have all the weight of a metal head. We are using spears that have ball bearings on the end. These are blunted. We are not going to be wearing masks because of the actions we're doing. They, the mask would not stop the force of the blow. There's too much of a leverage here. However, that being said, when you're studying and you're practicing these things, wear a mask. Some protection is better than no protection, and you really want to make sure that you're staying safe because this is a big lever. We have a couple different ways we can hold the spear. We're going to start where you grab onto it and you want the back of the spear to be the same length as your forearm. And then you want your lead hand to be that same length ahead of you. This is one way that we can hold the spear. The other way is we can choke up and take more of a half shaft, a half spear grip. If we get in tight, we can pull this back, and now our spear becomes a dagger. So we have these different ways that we can spear. I was fighting at Agincourt in 2015. I was on the battlefield, and I was having a great time fighting about three different guys in front of me, here, here, and here. And I was doing really well until a spearman from about there, as I went to hit one of his guys in the head, just stabbed in the back. It stabbed me in the armpit, put me down. And that brings us to our last use of the spear, which we'll use, which I like to call pull cueing. In the German tradition, you'll see them quite often holding it at the base of the spear. You'll also see this in the Chinese tradition. But in the Italian tradition, they generally tend to hold it with the space between their hands, which for staff work is why it's called a quarter staff, or possibly one of the reasons it's called a quarter staff. We have a couple different ways we can hold it. The, uh, can you see what that message is while I'm doing this? Yeah. We have a couple different ways we can hold this. So it's from Ezekiel saying, hi, and just two dudes in a warehouse choking up on their, oh, okay. When a teenager. <laughs> When we're in here, I can hold it with my bottom hand down, my point high, and we'll call this low guard. 
And even though my point is high, I'm protecting low. We can then rotate our hands around, and now this is high guard. We'll see this in several different types of manuscripts. So I have high guard, I go back to low guard, and I do that by pushing my, my bottom hand, my left hand, or we'll call this section right here, we'll call that the Q. And that's a name that's used for the bottom of the spear or the pole axe in Jut de la Hache. So we'll call this bottom part here the Q. If I'm in high guard, I rotate my cue around to my hip to bring my point into play. And this is one of the ways that I can use my spear as a cutting tool. This also means that with this, I can deflect incoming cuts or thrusts. So if John stabs me in the chest with a pull cue action, so he's maintaining distance just to make that strike. Now, logically, or I guess I should say martially, this would be better served to stab me in the face. But because we don't have masks on, and I've been stabbed in the face wearing a mask with these spears, it doesn't do a lot of good for your neck. So we're gonna stay away from the face. So if I'm in high guard, the first thing I can do, go ahead and stab me again, is pull that down and really set it to the side. That puts me in low guard. Let's do that again. And when we do that, Watch how much his spear moves. Let's do it one more time. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to now is my lead hand because my lead hand doesn't really move. So as he does that action, that leaves me here so I can then pull cue right to him. My other option if he's in here and I'm in high guard is to step behind my sword, my spear. Go ahead. And that's why I can put my tuta volta into this. So let's do that again. I'm in high guard. He stabs me, and I step to the side. Now I'm going to do that same kind of action, but instead of going up high as I pull it down, I step through, and this is where I take him on the knee with my spearhead. So let's do that again. I'll tell you, <laughs> knee to this, a spearhead to the knee is also an unpleasant sensation. So I'm in here, he stabs me, I toot a volta. I bring this down and I step, and there's that nice blow to the knee, which then he falls down, and the nice thing is that he actually falls right onto my point. So this gives me some different options. If he's, I wanna stay and play with those for a moment. Let's switch sides. Certainly. So I'm in high guard. He thrusts at me, and then I poke him in the face. I'm in high guard. He thrusts at me, then I poke him in the arm. Or I skip his arm, and I go straight for his guts. From here, do it again. If, hold on one second. If Right now, I haven't used my feet. But if I move outside, I'm not going to move. Go ahead and stab me. So here's his target. Do it again. If I move out with an accrescimento, I've moved it to my left shoulder, which means the strike to his spear hat, his shaft, only has to be small to clear the body. And because he's holding it at the very end, that's a lot of weight out there. Let's go back to it again. Go ahead. Now I don't need to worry about a lot. And what we're gonna do for this action is I'm gonna do it a crescimento, a step outside, with a rotation from high guard to low guard, followed by a mezza volta, a passing step. I have talked about in other videos that I don't want you to aim your weapon with your arm or with your eye. Instead, I want you to aim your weapon with your body. So you put it in place, and then you step to where you wanna be. And if we do this, here, he thrusts, I'm not gonna move. So that's the blow coming in. Good, do it again. I step out. Because I'm in low guard, and then I do a mezza volta, I don't even need to do anything with my spear. 
and I'm still protected. Go ahead and come back to hit me with your spearhead, please. Yes, sir. Nice and slow. <laughs> Who's going to get there first? You're going to get there first. And it's going to be a spear to the face, which is a downer for the day. One more time, same thing. Okay. Go ahead and bring your spear around. I can also put it right into his hand. Makes it difficult to hold it. We have the cue. This is where we can utilize the cue. Go ahead and do that again. I'm here. I set that aside. He comes through, and he can defend it with the cue. Look how much stronger that makes him because he's no longer fighting me. He's going with me. General rule of combat. Be a nice guy. They want to throw their face on your point. They want to throw themselves into the ground or into the wall. Help them. Be a nice person. I think I'm very nice. Other people don't think so so much, but I'm a very nice person. I know they want their arm in that pretzel position and I'm going to help them get there. I know they want to throw their throat upon the point of my spear, and I'm a nice person. Be a loving, caring person and help them get what they want. PSA for the day. It's an important thing to remember. So he throws his attack. He covers with his cue. Now where's he going to come around? He's just going to hit me from the other side. Now his spear has become a cutting weapon as well. But because I'm in that position, I can defend myself. And we're going to do that by going back to high guard. Let's do that one more time. He attacks. I set that aside. He covers. And now I'm protected. And this is where we get into the stuff that Fiore talks about. So watch this. You're going to, it's going to make contact with me. Okay. If I just go bring my hand, my Q hand down, let's switch sides. Okay. If I just bring my Q hand down, I take his spear to my neck. But, uh, my feet were backwards. But if I do a tuta volta and I do the footwork of Fiore, I can set, take it right over my head. Do it again. Now, this is really interesting. Let's come a little closer. Good. If I do a tuta volta and I keep my lead knee bent, watch his spear, I get hit in the head. But if I do like Fiore says, and I do my tuta volta and I lean back, and then I get into this position here. And now I've got the control I want. And when we see pictures in Fiore, we see this where he's back weighted. So he's actually standing like this. Here I get hit. Here it goes over me because I'm changing the distance. This goes back to something we've covered in previous videos, and that is, what does your back foot control? Back foot controls overall distance. My back foot controls the overall distance between me and my opponent. Therefore, if I move my body more towards my back foot, I'm opening up distance between him and myself. And that's how I use this to protect myself. Can we do that again? He launches the attack. He covers that. And that just puts me right into place so I can finish my stab. And I don't even really need to move much except shift my weight. And because I'm using my body to strike, I can hit the target I choose. Let's do that again. He's here. Now I'm going to go for his thigh. Because where's his sword point or his spear point most likely going to go? Or his defense, I should say, if I'm here. It's going to go up. And then I can just put it right into his thigh. Turn it down. He's no longer fighting against me. Simple rule of putting a blade in a body. If I stick a blade into another human body, 
I never pull that blade out. Why? Leaves a clean channel. So, no, it's just a little tiny hole. Yeah. It's the width of my blade. But if I put a blade in, I twist and rip. My goal is to make him no longer want to be engaged in this confrontation. And a gaping hole in a muscle will detract from his desire to be engaged. Would you agree? I would agree with that. So we come through. I start in high guard. I across the mento to set it aside. I mezzavolta with the thrust. He covers that. I drop down. There's that half staff. I toot the volta and back weight myself to go to set him over to the side. He comes to defend. I lift up my point, step forward, drive it into his thigh, and then go back to low guard. And he no longer wants to be here. So let's switch sides. Do it again, please. Yes, sir. Uh, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Complete brain fart. Go ahead. And because of what I'm getting here, I can thrust or cut. Watch this. Gonna love this. I bet. And that's where I get, once I hit the target, I don't pull both hands back, I just pull the cue hand back. And that provides my cut. And that's me basically going into that dagger grip that we were talking about earlier. Let's go and do that again, please. And then I can just come right back forward. Because I hit here, and then I pulled my cue hand back, there's that cut, and I'm already in line for my next blow. This is also very useful if they're in armor. And I say that because armor on the legs usually comes to about mid-thigh. I'm not going to be able to stab through his thigh. So go ahead and let's do it again. I come around and I strike his leg. And that actually opens up the back of his leg. Then I can stab him in the groin. <laughs> and I don't care how tough you are. You get stabbed in the groin by a spear, you no longer want to be there. And what was that? Just like the back foot controls overall body distance, the cue hand controls the overall spear distance. Yes. Absolutely. Very good, Ezekiel. And I can control where I go by using this. So far in this action, we've been moving towards our right side with a right hand lead. We're going to maintain the right hand lead, but now I'm going to be moving to my left side with a tuta volta. Check and measure. Check and measure. Nice. I guess with a spear, it's not really as important. <laughs> it's a good idea to keep in mind there that I mean, where my body's aimed, actually. Important in training. So he attacks. I said, this, look how much more he moves. Now, when he goes to do his cue, I just lift up my point and drive it right in. The tuta volta means his cue, I can make his cue useless to him. Let's go and do that again. Now, if he's in armor, I can't do anything there. So I actually aim just to the inside of his thigh because that gives me the back of his the unarmored section of his back leg. And, yeah, I stabbed him in the leg, but he can still hit me in the head, hit me. That's when I go to high guard again and go back. So I'm here, I've got that in the back of his leg, and then when he does that, I rip it out. Now I've got other things I can do to make my strikes. So there's some of the ways that we can use High guard with a transition to low guard, whether I'm moving to my inside or my outside. 
One of the interesting things about spear, staff, I can do it with either foot forward. So when you're practicing this drill, I want you to practice it with both foot, both feet lead, not at the same time, obviously. So I'll start here and then I'll switch and I'll start here because I want to be able to do it both ways. There's that, there's the thigh. I'm in high guard, I step out, I step forward, he sets that aside. I cover myself here. I toot the volta back weighted, drop it down so I release, and there's my strike. So it's important that you practice it on both sides. I'd like to say life is always fair, but it's not. And as we were saying at the beginning, I also want to talk about going into the fight with spear and sword. And I'll tell you, if this is on your side, you are not going to be want to fight. You are not going to want to fight with the spear. You're going to be tripping all over your sword. It's uncomfortable and frankly dangerous. There's a couple different ways I can hold this, and I've seen it both ways. We hold it like this, and now I've got my spear. And if I want to do a transfer, I've got my sword. This works. I don't like it myself because I don't get to wrap my fingers around my spear shaft very much. It just doesn't give me the same feeling. But if, on the other hand, I flip it around and I hold it by the blade, so I hold it like this, my hands still pretty much in the same place. Now I've got my spear out here, and what's very cool about holding it this way, I also have a set of quillins on my spear. So if my opponent, let's say he just cuts down at me, I can capture that and set it aside to make my own counter. He does a thrust, and I come through, it has not affected my spear work at all. So holding it this way means I have control of my sword, I have control of my spear, and I can still completely wrap my hands around my spear shaft, giving me the control I want. Whereas if I'm holding it this way, I lose some of the control on my back hand because of the pommel. At least with this pommel. With a wheel pommel, maybe it'll be different. But if I have a scent stopper pommel, I'm going to run into the same kind of problem. One of the questions that people often ask me is, won't that cut your hands? And the answer is no, because as long as it doesn't slide in my hands, it's not going to cut. Here's the other thing that I very much like about this grip. Let's say I'm fighting John, and we're here. And then I shift. I can do that now, but watch this. I drop my point down, and I now have go and push into my spear. So I'm there, covered around. Now I've got all this control. And I've got a balance point that I can move my spear around on. And what's even cooler, go ahead and get out of the way. Okay. No, come over this way behind me. If I'm fighting my opponent and I'm in here and I'm holding my sword upside down like this and I'm fighting, I can rotate here, send off my spear and get back into, now I'm in my sword fight. And it did not cost me any time or action to create basically an atlatl with a spear and a sword. So it gives me so many different available options. And because I've got multiple points of contact, it can even make me very strong in my grip. There's just a quick touch on one action of spear work. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have questions 
or comments, please do write them in the comment section because I do watch these videos and respond to, please do write them in the comments section because I do read the comments and I will reply. I hope you enjoyed this. If you in, did enjoy it, please hit the subscribe button below, subscribe to our channel, and watch the interviews and other martial techniques that we have on the channel. Let me put this down. So thank you very much for being with us. Stay safe, stay sane, or sane as you can. Pretty much. And until we have the opportunity, let's go to high guard. Bring it around to low guard and then up. Thank you very much for being here. All the best. Take care. Good to see y'all. Boom. Be well. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Cool. Thank you, sir.